I always like seeing how the same app would be built in different tech stacks. What choices would you make? What are the things that make each individual tech stack language uh, options unique? And Theo from T3.gg put out this video. I built the same app with five different tech stacks in it. He built this roundest app, uh, which basically is, hey, how can you rate a uh, categories of Pokemon in which is roundest and it was built in let's see so this is one app five stacks it was built in the react server components version there was a rails version a um OG T3 stack, which I believe was the original application that Theo kind of built when he put out his T3 stack tutorial and then in Elixir version, as well as a Go and GraphQL version. And uh, each one of these is really interesting. I, I took a deep dive into the code to see like how each was kind of being built. And there are some differences in terms of like the UI and like what the results page kind of looks like and how things are seeded versus how they're fetched on load. And I figured, why don't I do this with the tall stack with the stack that I am most familiar with Laravel live wire. Um, we're not really using Alpine other than what Livewire kind of gives you out of the box and then Tailwind. And uh, I basically tried to copy as much one for one as some of the other ones. I basically, I, I took a lot of inspiration or just took a lot of the code from Rails because it's very similar as well as the Elixir version. One thing that's really crazy to me, and I haven't fully optimized my application that I'll show you in a little bit, but the elixir version is incredibly fast this is not turbo but still if i was to click i'm clicking really fast really fast really fast and it just it and this this is live view you know web sockets in action even the turbo turbo version i mean i can't really tell the difference between both of them but that is definitely by far the fastest version that was built uh ogt3 stack is a little bit slower compared to the rsc version um, that cold start is a little bit slow. Uh, then you have Rails version, which I would say the tall stack, at least how I built it initially, and this is just kind of very basic. I threw this together over a lunch break. Um, it's probably around the same speed, maybe a little bit faster than the Rails version. RC version is, is fast, um, especially it doesn't let you kind of like click multiple times within because of what Livewire is doing, it does allow you to click multiple times. Um, and then the uh, Go and GraphQL version is probably uh, about the same speed as Rails, maybe a little bit slower just in terms of feel. So what is Roundus, the Laravel version? Roundus joshsiri.com This is actually hosted on Laravel Cloud. Um, so a little sneak peek into uh, how this is hosted. I basically pushed it up to the GitHub repo and then hosted it on cloud. And so this is the tall stack version um, voting. The first one is probably a little bit slower, just, uh, but then after that, it starts to speed up a little bit. You can tell that it kind of has a little bit of lag behind. Like if I was to click it, there's a slight delay. And if you click multiple times, I stopped. And all of a sudden there, there's a slight delay in, in terms of what it's catching up to, because we're making those server requests. We get all the information. The UI just hasn't fully rendered the sprites. And so I think there are some optimizations that I can make within this in terms of eh, maybe like caching the sprite. I did find Nick Potts made a version of Roundus Laravel that I didn't see until after I had put together my version. There are some differences in the code. So why don't we dive into what uh, Nick was doing and then I'll kind of put in how I did it. A lot of how the uh, cedars is very similar. So in the sense of the actual database and cedars, it's it's one database cedar that we're pulling in all the Pokemon information. Again, some of the apps within that, the one app five stack thing, some of them like Rails had, I believe the votes as another table. I just kind of like left votes like Elixir where votes were kind of in the same table. I believe Nick Pop has two different models. So yeah, a vote model and then a Pokemon model. And this is where uh, Nick kind of got a little bit creative in terms of the speed in which this is, allows to be done. And this is probably some of the optimizations that I can make in my application. Uh, he fetches a specific count. And then if we take a look at his Livewire um, 
the vote page, which is the main page uh, on mount fetches two Pokemon as well as the next 10. So what he's doing is he's pushing the next 10 uh, into the into the page from the get go. So that way there's a little bit less uh, a little bit less having to be fetched on every turn. And you'll see how I'm doing it in a little bit. But in the live wire views of vote, what he's doing is he's prefetching the next 10 as the Pokemon are continuously voted for. Uh, and this is also interesting too, the wire.replace self. I, I wonder if there's, I wonder if that is a uh, optimization that I can make as well. I actually haven't seen it too much. So yeah, cause that's replacing the image for the Pokemon URL. Very interesting. I actually didn't see that until, until now. Let's, let's check wire replace self. You can also instruct LiveR to replace the target element as well as all children. Very interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into uh, my source code. First off, how many lines of code is it? Uh, it's kind of like a little bit of an unfair, but it's good to know, okay, how much is actually happening. Uh, it looks like around 1,117. I forget the numbers for what like Rails was, but I would imagine this is similar to like the Rails and Elixir version. I didn't try to optimize for lines of code, but let's go ahead and pull this up. The big differences that I did within the uh, Pokemon model was being able to get a random pair. And again, you might have seen there, like I could have optimized the lines of code by deleting the user models and deleting these migrations I don't necessarily need. I have this get random pair as a static function to be able to pull in the Pokemon that I need uh, on the page load. So I have basically in our web routes, I have two routes, a slash route and an index route and a results route. And so in the index.blade.php, I'm using Volt, the functional component. We have a placeholder to basically say, okay, as this page is loading, let's go ahead and show a loading spinner. There's a bunch of little things I'm just catching right here, like layout. I also have this weird thing in VS code where uh, I have to save without formatting. Otherwise this kind of HTML here, uh, doc block gets all wonky. And so I'm basically just pushing the Pokemon in using get random pair so that whenever this handle vote is called, it refreshes the component. And so no optimization is really being done right now. We're just uh, handling the vote based off of the Pokemon ID and then just going from there. Same thing on the results page, but I did add a little bit different items on the results page. So I do have in Roundus, the Laravel version, the results is uh, paginated as well as a searchable function. I did notice in the Elixir version, the results is very nice. I might change the UI to look a little bit closer to this. I'll keep the search and pagination maybe. I also just noticed in the web routes, I need to lazy load these because we're using the placeholder, but we're actually not lazy loading these. So I can go ahead and uh, push this to make that change. So get status, get add, get commit, lazy load full pages. We'll push that and get it deployed. Awesome. So the only other interesting thing that I know that, that is, uh, interesting within the context of looking at the different applications is how easy it is within Laravel to get Cedar information. We can even use GraphQL as a query for right here. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just passing all of this information. I did choose to save uh, the Dex ID and the Sprite. So you can see here, we basically save the URL of a Sprite based off this GitHub user content with the Dex ID. Uh, different versions of this application chose to pull the Sprite on page load using the Dex ID. So basically just saying, uh, here's the image URL and they're just changing the Dex ID on page load or when they're grabbing that. I believe even Nick Potts is doing that as well. Maybe not, Pokemon URL. So it looks like he was saving the URL for the Sprite. Some additional optimizations that I could make to make this a little bit better would be to have cached versions which saying, okay, hey, let's cache the next 10 similar to like what Nick Potts is doing so that when we're voting, we're basically just uh, voting and applying those changes using an array that we've already preloaded. Another thing that someone had mentioned within the comments of the one at five stacks in a pull request is being able to have additional improvements for the Elixir version 
section, which included, I believe, pulling it. Let's load all the images up front instead of the only thing next to. That's really interesting to me because that might be something that we could do within the tall stack. Basically just cache all the images and pull them on first page load so that we're just looping through those as you get to each individual index of a Pokemon. All in all, it was a lot of fun being able to kind of dive in and just at least really quickly, and we'll make some optimizations as we go, but really quickly just see, okay, what are the differences between some of these more popular tech stacks and how do you make choices when it comes to loading information or, you know, making all of this happen and even some of the queries that I didn't fully talk about in terms of like the results page. And basically I just optimized or opted for the query builder in that instance of, okay, how are we calculating the percentage wins? So there's so many ways to do things. So as long as you keep building, keep creating.